Brian Day, $13 million, and unpopular opinions have found their way into today's episode of Locked on Buckeyes. It's the final show of the week. Let's go out with a bang. You are Locked on Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Buckeye fans? Welcome back to another episode of Locked on Buckeyes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. It is Friday, June 3rd in the year 2022, and today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. I would also like to thank you for making Locked On Buckeyes your first listen or first watch of every single day. I got two words for you that comes to my mind and it might come to your mind when you hear about the NIL money that is going to athletes and how much money schools might believe a football team needs to keep the roster together. Sticker shock. Your boy used to sell cars, did it for three, three and a half years, I believe. And it would not surprise me when somebody would come in, look at a car, and they say, ooh, how much does this bad boy cost? You show them the sticker on the car. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, no. Their eyes would get big. They would get really hesitant. Then the next way, the next moments, over the next few moments, you show them how you break it down and explain to them how things go, how it fits into their budget. Buddy, they're rocking and rolling, and they're going through and leaving the lot in a car that they did not think they could afford. Sticker shock hits me all the time when I hear about NIL money, when I hear about different schools discussing things, when I hear about NIL deals that certain players are getting. And we'll definitely discuss things later in the show regarding some specific positions and how much money Ryan Day believes certain players at certain positions require an NIL money. Sticker shock hits me. And it sure, I'm sure it might hit you. It hit me when I heard or when I read that Ryan Day believes that Ohio State needs $13 million to keep the football team together. You heard that correctly. This came from an article that uh, was written by Doug Maurice, columnist for Cleveland.com. And Ryan Day ended up speaking to about 100 members of the Columbus business community on Thursday morning. And NIL was the topic. $13 million is the rate that Ryan Day believes this team needs, the school needs, to keep the football roster together. This is all in result to NIL being illegal starting July 1st of 2021. We are less than a year into this, and many people are saying, this is crazy. This is insane. This is, this, this is what's going on. What are people doing? Well, when you allow things to be legal and people such as C.J. Stroud, Travion Henderson, Zach Harrison, Jack Sawyer, J.T. Tumalowow, Jackson Smith and Jigba, when they have a market rate or they, or they have a value, their market rate might say, oh, I can get X, Y, and Z. And that might add up to a certain dollar amount and sticker shock might hit you. It hits me. I'm not going to say I'm the only person that gets hit with the sticker shock when I hear about these numbers. Now, you might say, Jay, $13 million, that's a lot of money. There are 85 scholarship players on the team, on the roster. That does not mean those are the only people that can get a part of the $13 million that Ryan Day believes the football team needs to keep it together. However, an 85-man roster, we can break it down easily, well, very easily that way. With the math, that's not $150,000 for 85 people, even though that's a good chunk of change. They're getting a free education. You can say whatever you want about the free education. They're still getting a free education, which is a dollar amount that they are not putting out of their own pocket or the family's pocket or taking a loan out to get this. So keep that in mind as well. This is not $150,000 per scholarship player. It's more so $500,000. This is coming from Doug Lamarice in his um, projections. This is more $500,000 each to 26 guys you cannot live without. Now, you might say, Jay, 
There are 22 guys who are starters on a football team. If you add in the long snapper, the punter, and the kicker, that's 25. All 25 of them do not have the same market value. 500,000 is a rough, is a number at the moment. However, when you realize your starting center is probably not going to have the same NIL deals as your quarterback, your starting center is not probably not going to have the same amount of NIL deals and money as your starting defensive end or your linebacker. You understand there's going to be a hierarchy. And Ryan Day understands the game has completely changed. It's not what it used to be where players were getting money under the table and in McDonald's bags and in duffel bags. Those days are long gone where things are being done behind closed doors. People can do things within the confines of the NCAA guidelines and the NCAA rules and allow players to get money capitalizing on their name, image, and likeness. Now, when you think about capitalizing on your name, image, and likeness, you may say, well, 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 well why, why now? Because they can. That's it. Because they can. The $13 million is definitely a sticker shock moment for me. The $13 million might not be a sticker shock to these businesses because they anticipated Ryan Day having a meeting and Ryan Day doing certain things to help encourage these businesses to get, come up out of their pockets to assist the university and the football players so they can be the best that they can be. The game has changed. I have said it once. I'll say it again. The game is not done changing. And I do think at some point things will fizzle out, will calm down, and we'll get some level of more, not say a level playing field because it's never really been level, but you won't have everything coming out like it is at the moment. I do believe at some point it will fizzle out and calm down. Ryan Day understands. There's a speed limit. You can't go away. You can't, if it's 45 miles per hour, you can't go 80. You can't go 30. If you go 45, they'll get passed up. Is it cool to go 50 or 52 or 55? How far over the speed limit can you go? What's the limit? Will I get in trouble? Well, if I stay inside of the confines of the rules, will I get passed up by other universities that are currently behind me? Well, Ryan Day is currently trying to find his way to navigate these waters, to understand what is going on and how with his players or recruits and how he can better assist them to be the best that they can be. Ryan Day, I love what he is doing. $13 million, that's what he believes he's going to take to keep this roster together. And man, just let me tell you, we're going to hear more about NIL. Not just from John Garcia Jr. as we do our weekly recruiting update, but from Ryan Day as well because he knows what he needs to do to keep this team together so it can be the best team it can be. Remember earlier when I mentioned we're going to discuss what top Ryan Day believes top-tier players at certain positions requiring NIL money? Oh, yeah, buddy. Wait till you hear about this. We're going to talk about that next. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all of the latest sports developments, news, and odds, including this year's basketball championship matchup, the NHL Hockey Conference Finals, Major League Baseball, and, of course, all the latest fighting news from MMA and UFC to boxing. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online where the game starts. We have an important favor to ask you. We've put together a survey so we can learn more about listeners like you and make your favorite Locked On podcast even better. This is your opportunity to tell us what you like and don't like about Locked On Podcast. Go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey right now to get started. It won't take very long, and everyone that completes a survey can qualify for a chance to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards. To take our audience survey, go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey. Thanks for your, your help. Man, oh man, that $13 million is going to hit you but wait till you hear how much money Ryan Day believes certain players at certain positions require in NIL money. 
And that $13 million will make a lot more sense to you. You may not really understand it or agree with it, but I'll help it make a lot more sense. Ryan Day believes that at three certain positions, if you're a top-tier quarterback, you'll require $2 million in NIL money. If you are a top or a major offensive tackle, you will, be, you will require $1 million in NIL money. And if you are a major or a top-tier edge rusher, you will require $1 million in NIL money. Think about that. So we went to $13 million earlier. We're down to $9 million because three of that, $4 million of that is wrapped up by three different positions. C.J. Stroud, starting quarterback for this year's team. Now, I'm, hypothetically, I don't, I don't know how much money they're getting. I do believe Stroud had a, a million last year. I don't know how much he's currently going to have for the over, over the, coming, uh, the coming up season. But Stroud hypothetically has $2 million wrapped up in him. Paris Johnson Jr. hypothetically has a million wrapped up in him at left tackle. Dewan Jones might be a million as well. I'm just saying, it, he didn't say left or right. Top tier offensive tackle is primarily your left because he's blocking the blind side and he is really at that very most important, off one of the most important offensive positions. So two million wrapped up in the quarterback, a million wrapped up in Paris Johnson Jr. hypothetically, and then a million just because he's been here the longest, longest tenure starter in Zach Harrison. So now that you have some names in mind that you might say, well, it's kind of adding up now. It, it kind of makes sense. But then when you add Trevion Henderson, Jackson Smith, and Jigba, when you add in uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., when you add in Dewan Jones, because the previous example, I was using Paris Johnson Jr. because he's protecting the blind side of Stroud. When you add in Luke Whipler, when you add in Teron Vincent, when you add in Jerron Cage, Steel Chambers, Denzel Burke, Cam Brown, when you add all the other players in. Now, remember, NIL money can be as simply as you getting paid to sign autographs, you being paid for appearances, you being paid to appear in commercials, you being paid by a dealership to be a sponsor for them. Simple things like that. The endorsement deals that we hear about in professional athletics, those are, they're called endorsement deals. College has decided to call them NIL because players have not been able to legally make money off of their name, image, and likeness previously. So they call it NIL deals. So the NIL deals that I'm speaking of, they are supposed to be endorsement deals. And Ryan Day has said NIL deals money offered to players, it cannot be where they are getting paid for a performance or a bonus. So the $13 million, it's not a bonus or performance base. If you score 10 touchdowns in the season as a receiver, here's an extra X amount of dollars for you. No NIL deal can be that the players can require or demand that the player stay at Ohio State to be paid. So these are not, hey, you stay here, we'll keep you, we'll give you this money. Oh, you score this amount of touchdowns or you get this many sacks, we'll give you this amount of money. That's not going to happen. That, that can't happen. So these are supposed to be, you provide a service, you get some money, just like endorsement deals are in professional sports. That is what they're supposed to be. And Ryan Day understands the school has rules. The school has guidelines. The boosters have rules. The boosters have guidelines about things they can do. The collectives have rules. The collectives have guidelines that they can do. And as long as we use all of these resources together, put them in a pot, help them, allow them to help these youngsters maximize their name, image, and likeness, we are a Okay. But as we've recently heard, a top tier quarterback requiring $2 million, that's not really crazy when you think about it. It might be. I mean, it still is crazy. I'm not going to lie. It is crazy. However, it's not as crazy when you think about. I believe Nick Saban said that Bryce Young had a million dollars in NIL money last year in the very first year of NIL, well, first few months of NIL, because it was less than six months after NIL was done, and that number already was thrown out there. Stroud probably had close to $900,000 to a million dollars. I would say roughly $750,000 to a million dollars in NIL money. Um, 
that, that's just that is just a guess. I'm not saying concretely that is just a guess. Travion Henderson capitalized on that as well. We don't see Ryan Day, at least in the article, talk about what he believes a top-tier running back is going to require. But we do know the Texas running back Bijan Robinson has a deal with Lamborghini, which is which he's publicized. So we're seeing one of the best running backs in the country is getting one of the uh, getting a deal with a very, very, very luxurious car brand. What is a top receiver going to require? What is a top safety in Columbus going to, going to get? How much money are these companies going to throw at them? Sticker shock is real. But when you break down what we have already seen over the first year, it kind of makes sense. You might not agree with it. You might love everything you hear. Wherever you sit in the grand scheme of things, a lot of this makes sense based off of how quickly some of these businesses will or have taken advantage of the opportunity to assist these youngsters to make money and capitalize on their name, image, and likeness. Guys, I've said it once. I'll say it again. The game has changed. I do believe at some point, though, as we will discuss in our unpopular opinions uh, very in, coming up later in the show, we will, we will, we will see things level out. We will see things kind of fizzle, not say fizzle out and go away, but kind of get more of a level playing field. We're kind of in the upper trajectory of really at the height of this thing and things getting crazier. It's going to get crazier before it gets better, before it calms down. This is what Ryan Day believes about these three positions. Now, if he were to break it down and say, well, all 22 starting positions, here's where I think how much money they will require. That $13 million might not be as crazy as it may seem right now. Coming up next... A few unpopular opinions that your boy has had for quite a while. This is the perfect time to share them. What are they? Stick around. You'll hear them right here. Next. Unpopular opinions. We all have them. From things about what's going on in college football to things going on in our workplace to things going on with food. We all have unpopular opinions. Sometimes we share them. Sometimes we don't. Your boy has no problem sharing a few with you. We talk. Five days a week, Monday through Friday. We are getting to know each other really, really well. Some of you in the YouTube comments, I read some of those. I'm getting to know you. You're getting to know me. Well, how about you get to know me a whole lot better as your boy unveils a couple, just two, unpopular opinions about things going on right now in collegiate athletics. Coaches have been saying things, and they have been telling you things that they want you to believe. Sometimes they're saying things that are correct, but a lot of coaches lately have been lying to us. Anytime a coach says they don't know what's going on, they don't know the rules regarding NIL, I would encourage you to not believe them. I would encourage you to just quickly, you can listen to what they got to say, but quickly realize he is saying something that is not believable at all. Yes, there are rules that are not being enforced in NIL but they are still rules. These coaches know the rules. These coaches know the playing field. These coaches know exactly what they are doing. These coaches understand that when it comes to NIL, that when it comes to the things that are going forward that they need to do to make their team the best team that it can be, sometimes they feel like it's, their, it's in their best interest to not tell the truth. Oh, we don't know the rules regarding NIL. We don't know what, what's going on. We don't know what the rules are for, for this person or for that person. We don't know. We need some guidance. Nobody. You know the rules. The coaches have not been truthful. These A lot of these coaches, they're just saying things and saying things and saying things just to say them. They know what the rules are. The, the, things haven't changed. They've changed a little bit with the, legaliz the legalization of the NIL. But it, you still know who can give money to athletes and who cannot, what the school's role is with the boosters and what the school should do, what the school should not do, what the boosters can do, what the boosters cannot do, what the athletes can do, what the athletes cannot do, who they can sign a deal with, who they cannot sign a deal with. They know the rules. They've always known the rules. Why in the world is it that sometimes these people feel so comfortable? Why is it a lot of times people feel so comfortable, not just coaches, lying 
Why? It doesn't make any sense. These coaches know what they're doing. These coaches know the rule. And sometimes these guys have been lying. They've been lying a lot because they know. A lot of people will not call them out to their face. Another one, unpopular opinion as we close out today's show. We have devalued, no, excuse me. Some people have devalued the price of a free education and, and what it means to get a free education so, so much that when players are getting sometimes $70,000 a year in a free education, yeah, they may not live in, in uh, school housing, so they may pay for their own place to live, which is cut, which is great. There's a cost of attendance stipend. There are things coming out with these athletes that they get because they are college football players or even college basketball players. People have devalued the scholarship. Now, I'm not saying people like myself. A lot of people out there have said, oh, please, the price of education, these kids getting a, a free scholarship, they're getting no money. Um, well, <laughs> it might not go directly into their pocket, but they are getting a free education, which is a large chunk of change that is that they are not paying after they graduate from school. Also, keep in mind, not everybody on the football team is getting a free scholarship, is getting a scholarship, a full ride to the Ohio State University. 85 men scholarship. Let's just go with the with the football. We've been talking about that all day. The football team has allowed 85 scholarship players. There are over 100 players on the team, which would tell you not everybody is getting a full ride to school. We have devalued things. The scout people, I won't say we, because I try my I try my best not to do that. The scholarship by someone's been devalued so, so much that it's not enough for them. It's not enough. Oh, you get you get free schooling? Oh, okay, cool. That's that's great, but that's not enough. We need we need more. Oh, you get a free you you get free food and you get um a free place to live. I'm sorry, like I said not everybody chooses that. Oh, cool. Like, but but that's not enough. We are never satisfied. I think we need to take a step back and realize a free education is huge. There is there are talks that I've read things that the government government might forgive up to ten thousand dollars in student debt for people, which is huge, which is great. You tell that person that owes over $100,000 that an athlete is getting a free ride, and you say, oh, well, that's not enough for them. They're going to say, excuse me, what do you mean? That's not enough. I have been paying on these student loans for 20, 25 years. Now, you may say, yes, people are paying for on these things for a very long time. And for some odd reason, people are out here saying a scholarship is not enough. Excuse me? Excuse me? I'm not saying that the NCAA and these schools cannot give more. I would never say that. But I would never say that a scholarship is, is, is just a scholarship. For education is not important. Oh, please, get out of here. Get, get out of here. A free education, a free education, it's huge. Really, really huge. Which is why some players go to places because one place might provide a partial, not so much Ohio State, but other schools. They might provide a partial scholarship while somebody else might provide a full ride. And they go to a place that has a full scholarship fully covered because they want to graduate debt-free. And it makes a whole lot of sense for them to make that decisions. People have devalued the, the cost and the importance of a free education so much that they say, hey, going to school for free, it's not enough. Regardless of what the university can, can provide for you, free ride, no, that's not enough. It's not, it is enough. It, it is, it's, it's, it's amazing. Don't devalue the price of a, free, of a free education. Trust me, because a lot of people in America and around the world would go crazy if they could get a free education at the Ohio State University. I'm out of here, guys. It's Friday. Let's enjoy the weather. Let's enjoy the weekend. Let's have a good old time. Last year, if you remember, we went down to three episodes a week in June and doing a portion of July. That's not happening this week. We're going to still run through and ride three days a week, Monday through Friday. Excuse me, five days a week, Monday through Friday. So you can get everything. You stay up to date with the Buckeye Talk. Have some fun summer topics. We're going to have one next week with my guy, Jeff Hunt, from the Off the Ball Network. Stay right here. Tap in, tune in, and be ready to go every Monday 
through Friday as we talk about your Ohio State Buckeyes. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at jstevens07. Thank you for making Locked on Buckeyes your first listen today. Now make your second listen to the Locked on NBA Big Board podcast. Rafael Barlow, Richard Stamen, Sam Ferris, and Leif Doolin give fans an in-depth look into the biggest prospects, the latest player rankings, and, of course, big boards. Follow Locked on NBA Big Board every day on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your fine podcast.